I'm gonna do this one uh, with the camera here. Uh, I am on. I just finished chapter 20, so I officially, when I'm done this video, I will have no idea where it goes. I want to show you. I don't know if you can see there. You can see this clean part there. And then you can see this other part. That just shows how much I go back. I don't know if that shows greasy hands or what. But it just shows how much I go back to earlier parts in in the book. And I, when I'm done this, I will definitely do some kind of uh, separate video with just some final thoughts. As well as a bit of a review of maybe what I think people could expect if they start the series because I think people should I think people should and it might not be for everyone but I think if you can push through some of those early that some of that early stuff that might not be for everyone I think you can find some great stuff and obviously if you are here you have found that, but I would love if, if more people got into this series. It really has been a massive, massive treat. Now, uh, as always, you know, I, I can't go through everything. I've tried to do a decent enough summary of stuff. Um, but I don't want to get so bogged down with that kind of thing. I do like to read more. In like for the first book and the second book, I read both of those in less than a week. So now with this one, with how slow I've been going through and you can see, let me just show you this one. Yeah, like just right there. This is just the last part of chapter 18. Um, it just is, look, at look, I just at the end of a chapter, I'll just write a bunch. And literally for for virtually every page, I just... I just have loved it. And I'm doing that in part, I do that with my history books because not so much that I need that for when I go back, but it helps me just make some connections. And when I'm done a chapter, I will go through and it, it just helps me. I mean, someone else going through it would see this and think, well, he's marked everything and thus he hasn't marked anything. Um, but I will disagree because I know I'm, I know the way I've marked, and I'm a little bit fuzzy on here. Um, hmm? I don't know. I don't know how to do that. I hope you don't mind that I'm a little bit fuzzy here, but it shouldn't matter that much. Now, let me just go through some of these parts. Uh, it starts with this little blurb thing. Man, I'm really fuzzy, aren't I? Hey! There we go. There we go. All right. It starts with this little blurb, blurb, so I'll read that. It is a most ancient tale. Two gods from before the time of men and women, longing and love and loss. The beasts doomed to wander through the centuries. Of course, these beasts being the, the ones that were mentioned at the very end of the prologue. A tale of mores, mores. Told with the purpose of no resolution, its meaning, gentle readers, lies not in a soul-warming conclusion, but in all that is unattainable in this world. Who, then, could have imagined such closure? And we have this first scene. Has Talk the Younger, and he is being held, they're kind of on this ridge, they can look down and he can kind of, he's being kind of shown everything that is going on. And if he had an eagle eye, he would really be able to see, but he's being able, he's being shown. He's seeing these traitor ships that are no longer at, at Coral, this other city that they're on their way to. Well, that the, that the South people are on their way to and the people from the North are on their way to. That's where talk is now. And they're on this place. He has this broken body. He's being held back by this seer domin, 
guy who has actually offered him a cloak. He's holding him to stop him from just tossing himself over, killing himself. And uh, there are just these... Uh, uh, a vast cordon of mages, thousand or more Kachain Chamal hunters, elite legions of his main army. And despite the defeats of the North, uh, or the defeats of the Mo North meant little to him. He's just getting started. As for the enemies in the South, there was now a vast stretch of rough sea uh, the sea of ice that they've traveled across that's having so much, uh, is causing so many issues for for this party that Talk was just with. Mountains of ice. The seer was well satisfied. And um, they see Lady Envy. Well, he kind of, is he th is he seeing them? now with his one of his his weird eye i mean it has been a another day since i read this um doesn't really matter they're on their way up and uh you should have seen coral in its day malazan this is the seer domin and it's funny because remember their entrance with the seer domin and uh and, you know, the first thing we had when they got to, when Talk and Lady Envy and they messed up that temple and the Seer Domin was super eerie and creepy. But this one is showing a little bit of humanity, I guess, if you can call it that. Gave him his cloak, said, you know, this city wasn't what it used to be. It used to be a fisher, uh, fisherman's uh, city. My... Uh, I joined it. I think I'm getting this right. I joined it. My mother joined it. My uh, kids or brothers and sisters, I can't recall. But his father was coming up, saw what was going on, and just went back into the sea, and that was the last he saw of him. So he escaped this tennis gallery fate going on. Right, his wife to the Tenescari, his sons, which he is one of them and became one of these seer domin. Um, his sisters naked and clinging to men thrice their age. And then he, he just left. A distant bell rang in the palace behind them. The allotted time is done. So that was his little time for, you know, out of the hug. I guess it looks like he's going back. These winds were once warm. Come lean on me while we walk. Your weight is as nothing. We get to Itkovian. And what is this part? Right. They are at this parlay still. And he doesn't, you know, he's kind of relinquished commands uh, to his new shield anvil and, and the destriant and da, da 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 And he doesn't think he, he's kind of, he doesn't want to be involved anymore. He wants to just kind of fade in the background. Remember, even though he has taken everything on, he also has this, you know, he's been touched by this kind of, uh, he's been touched by the circumstance of, of this. Life was, was returning to Kapistan. Uh, as people were coming out of the tunnels with scarves around their faces, bodies were being retrieved, the air of the street stinking with decay. And then they just resumed their journey out of the city while everyone was starting to kind of do this rebuild. They're not looking forward to it. And, uh, of course, the mask council of priests has gone ahead likely to first reach Kaladin Brood and get their way if if they can if they can uh, you know they're trying to get their way so they're going to be there first Ikovian on this road recalls some soldiers that he knew that had fallen there 
They are my own grief, as difficult to bear as those thousands of others. Yet he pushed through. Control was still necessary. Now, Picker and Blend are a part of the cleanup crew, sort of. And they're busy cleaning up these stones and whatnot. Picker is, at least. And Blend is always off kind of gathering some reconnaissance, you know, gathering some information and stuff. And shows up at the perfect times and then, and then leaves at the other times. And... Uh, Sorry, I'm just reading this. Sounds like... Uh, yeah, anyway. Uh, then all of a sudden, I believe this is the point, and it was really cool. Sorry, when I do this more live, I, I can't... Let me just skip some of this because I don't want to go through all of this. Right. Beauchelaine and Corbel Broach show up with Picker there. Blend just kind of blends in the background, I guess. And they want, they're kind of uh, making some demands. Making some demands from Picker. And Picker, you know, you, you got her at the wrong day. She punches. Beauchelaine and knocks him out and picker or and blend uh blend knocks out Corbel Brooch which I thought was funny uh but again even picker and blend I I think I'm supposed to like them more than I do I don't I don't really care about them a lot I was excited about Picker when it came to these torques, but now that she doesn't have the torques, I think. Like I thought, I thought Gruntle's path that ended up with Gruntle, what we've seen with him, I thought that was going to be basically Picker. It's cool that she, that he got the torques, but I was kind of hoping that Picker was going to have that sort of path, and and hopefully. Hopefully she still will. We'll see. So they better get moving. Now they rode uh, Perrin and Quickban rode within a thousand paces of the tennis gallery encampment on the north of the road to their right. Right, they're going. They're going westward. And out of the corner of Perrin's eye, he kind of sees something on Quickban's shoulder. But when he looks, it's gone. He's seeing this Talmandus guy. And uh, they speak about the second gathering as being kind of uh, that something has happened. Perrin is recognizing that maybe something is not quite right with Silver Fox, something unaccept uh, uh, unexpected. And and Quick Ben asks if it's still Tattersail at the forefront, which is something that, um, that we've wondered about. We've wanted to have Tattersail at the forefront to kind of repress the night chill part of her. And, and we will get to that in this chapter. I don't think quite, quite yet though. I don't know, Perrin says. All I will say, however, is whatever faith we held to that we could predict Silver Fox's actions should now be dispensed with. Which makes her unpredictable and and it's it's not a good situation. Now Quick Ben shows up and has a bunch of questions for her and she is not she's bugged, she's ticked off, uh she doesn't want to deal with uh with with Quick Ben. And she does say here that the anger that she faces or that they face if, if she gets more angry will be night chills and the rest of us will do nothing to restrain it. Meaning if I will let my night chill out and the other people within me aren't going to stop, stop it from happening. If anything truly existed between us, 
parent is thinking it is over now. Thinking of, of Tattersail. She has left Tattersail behind. She is indeed a bone caster now. That's what he's kind of thinking of. Uh, the next scene, I'll, I'll, I think this is basically it. This Itko, uh, Itkovian is leaving his old rank behind, trying to leave his old life behind. He gives his awesome helmet to somebody who can't believe it. And this soldier who really respects Ikovian doesn't is resistant to accept it and says you know I'll, I'll hold it for you but it'll be here for for when you need it for when you change your mind and Ikovian just exchanges the helmet for this other one which is of uh, it's well made I guess but it's not it's not the same and uh, let's see very very cool uh, and uh, everyone, when they see Ikovian go by, he's got kind of the same sort of aura about him as Whiskey Jack, as far as I can tell. He's wanting to go unseen, but he is more of a, kind of like a local celebrity. And when he kind of peeks into this parlay happening in Caledon Brood's tent, he is immediately welcomed. And this new shield anvil is trying to step into his shoes, but she just quite she's just not quite there yet. She's not quite there yet. And and they are not giving her that respect, it looks like. Now, what we find out is Karuli uh Oh wait, wait, wait. before that. We just one little note. Anamanda Rake and the majority of his Tistandi have returned to the moon spa spawn. There will be no further discussion about that. Karuli is there. And we recognize that uh, there's this tension now between Karuli and Kalor. You for you conveniently forgot yourself, priest. Oh wait, 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 wait. I underlined that, but um, see, that's what also happens when you underline about. Anyway, there's this moment where uh, Karuli also basically looks into Kalor and and makes it known that this is Krull talking to him or some kind of manifestation of Krull or Krull's a part of Karuli. And just like Silver Fox, now Kalor is there to look him in the eye. I wonder what will happen if, if when this happens with Dragnipur. Oh, no, no, with Draconis out of Dragnipur. That will probably really freak out Kalor. Kalor says, well, you've lost your power. No, I haven't. <laughs> He's basically saying. Now... Uh, that part's cool, and there's more to it, and if you've read it already, then that's great. They are going to split up, and one group kind of go to this city, one group go to this city, take those, because there's three cities to take over. They can't just go to each three. They're going to split apart, take them, and then meet at this last one. And uh, Rathburn comes in. Of course, these priests, remember the the ones that were in the chain of dogs? They would give, these priests here would give those ones, the, the nobles uh, from the chain of dogs a run for their money, I think. But this Rathburn demands that Brood give up his hammer that he's been given. You know, it's his, it's his job to wield that and make the decisions. He gives it up. And it's kind of a Thor's hammer sort of thing where she just can't wield it. It drops to the ground. It rumbles. It breaks. It snaps her wrists. He knew that was going to happen. And the reason he had it was you could either act. Uh, it, you can either not act, do nothing, and burn will die. Or you can use the hammer to crush a couple civilizations. As horrific as that is. 
and uh, but stop complete annihilation, this greater good sort of thing. Those were the two options that this priest sees and that perhaps Burns saw as well. But she had faith in Brood that he would find another way, which I find so awesome. It's the same thing where people have faith, like Crawl probably has a little bit of, he has faith in Kruppa. Uh, not, and, and Kruppa isn't like as much a servant of Krull as much as they are, they're working together through this thing. And Brood, uh, Brood is, a, is an interesting character more and more and more. Now, uh, yeah, so she demands it. She demands it. And, but there may be a third choice, Krull says through Karui. And, uh, he says they're going, they, they go for a medic to save, to heal this person with a broken wrist, this wrath burn and he's going to do it but instead of healing through this poisoned or infected uh denual warren of healing the one that mallet uses it's this pured purified purified warren which i and it surprises everyone crawl included and at that moment, I believe Perrin shows up with Silver Fox, who's gained a little bit of weight. Uh, Quick Ben is there, and I believe Kruppa as well. What is this? Kalor demanded. That Warren bore no sign of poison. Remember who he's working for. Indeed, Kroll smiled. It seems the illness has been pushed back from this location. I don't know if that means location ground-wise necessarily, or if it's because of everywhere that Perrin goes or everywhere that Ekovian goes or, or who knows. It, it Maybe everywhere Ekovian goes, it's like this bubble. Maybe I'm reading that wrong. But yeah. So that's important to know. And uh, we realize that we they go into this, uh, this story or this idea again, talking about the Talani Mass, how their whole kind of purpose is to get rid of the jagged and to enslave them and whatever. But Tool had this other purpose about him where, he, you know, he released one. He released one. And for that, Silver Fox says that he's going to have to pay for that. She makes it clear that when they get to the seer, uh, the, the, the Panion seer, the jagged, that he belongs to her. And during all this meeting, I thought this was cool as well, because this is just laying a foundation for the very last act of at least this book. If, if not, really a lot is starting to kick off in this book. It Covian looks at Kruppa and, and really recognizes him as, as really a center of all this. And uh, I can't wait to see where that goes. Now, we wonder about, we've wondered this, this far about who's at the forefront of Silver Fox at any given time. There's this warring of wills that we think is going on. And um, instead of one of them being at the forefront, which we've been worried about and we've wanted Tattersail, uh, who's the one that detects this? I believe it is... Right, Krapa shows up at just the right time. Of course. Of course, when they're talking about this, he shows up. And he has a story for them. The story of 
the the two wolf gods asks them if they've remembered it such a sorrowful story but what drove them apart it was horror from the dark sky descending to scatter the world so when the fallen god came split not all not, not only scattered everyone but scattered those two wolf gods the she wolf and the male wolf I call the she i don't call it the he wolf but. and then they were scattered and these dimmest of memories were all that remained wandering the tundra alone yet salvation is at hand this is krupa saying so there are four spirits within silver fox a spirit of hard edges another spirit to clasp hard the hurt of abandonment until i can find a proper answer he's saying a third spirit filled with compassion and love and a fourth possessing the power to achieve the necessary reparation of old wo wounds so we knew about tattersail so uh night chill which is a version of the elder goddess i guess bellardan and a fourth which is the namesake of silver fox it's a bone caster child which uh yeah very very cool and his his counsel to them is to trust silver fox the truster as much as we are conflicted and pulled this way and that to trust silver fox that this meshing is is what they need and it's not that one of them needs to go forward to come to the forefront but they are all working as one and they are united in this decision these decisions that they have um which you know i i was kind of hoping that she wouldn't release the talani mask because i like them so much but uh, you know really i i do want that to happen for them eventually uh but maybe she's not this ticking time bomb to go off so much quite yet um now we get back to silver fox and we're almost done here they well okay so they come they understand now that the two wolves have caught each other's scent and they will once again be together and that should give them a lot of power to the gray swords i would assume and now the shield anvil comes with this amazing request remember the shield anvil is now the shield anvil of these two wolves comes with a request bonecaster summoner of the gathering of the talan eye mass i formally ask that you yield the talan eye the children of our gods i didn't even catch that i didn't even think of that that these are the children of those initial ones and i love that baljag is actually a true flesh and blood real life eye in their in their glory or, or whatever as far as i can tell and you know she said no i'm not going to well they and she said well they're not yours to keep they were brought into this ritual because they loved the pre-ritual eye mass and they they've gone through enough she said i'm not going to and then she basically uh this captain the shield anvil says well you're gonna risk your life for this for this decision it's kind of like a shrug like i, I guess so now let me just get through this very last part we find the maiba once again dreaming and they want call and marilio are going to try to get them to to her to capistan they are struggling with this horse these horses that they got from those uh that mott crew that keeps that would steal stuff from kaladin broods kind of are uh part of kaladin broods kind of regiment 
uh, or, uh, you know, army and would steal stuff from Whiskey Jack. And these horses are giving them a heck of a time. They can't get the st- these, this rivy stake out. And they are, anyway, they accidentally release one of them and think, oh, crap. Um, crap. There, there's got to be another way. Maybe we can just jump onto another caravan. And Call says, no. And stop. Don't think that this is what we're doing. We need to get that horse. Give me a carrot or whatever he asks for and a and a lasso and and I'm going to go get it. Now, the very last part of this. Sorry, I just got to plug this in. The very last part of this. Um, this chapter and this third sub book, I think, is this awesome awesome scene with Lady Envy the Segula who are looking a little worse for wear Balljag who has a spear in her but won't let anyone come close a spear in her right shoulder and uh, Gareth who's just shaking uncontrollably kind of succumbing to something and they're in this ice there or on this ice but lady envy according to everyone else the way she looks just untouched not even a stain on her white clothes and they think well how's gonna how's mock gonna she thinks, oh my, how shall we follow Tool across this? Remember, he can just zip across this stuff. And Mock shows up, this number three, and says, remember, usually Mock was kind of, he's not the spokesman. They send Senu to do that, but she he's going to talk to her now. And he says, I want you to, um, yeah, I'm going to duel tool eventually but i want you to heal gareth she says how could i do that this is not he's got wounds he says no you've put that on him it's the fever the same thing that you've put on the panians to drive them back it's also infected into gareth and i and you are i need you to heal him and she kind of plays this little silly game which sometimes is sometimes it makes her likable sometimes you just want to scream at her and so finally and she's she's kind of immature and a little bit you know she's got a lot of uh you know you wouldn't want to cross her because she would probably be she's she's kind of like a junior high girl at heart just nasty sometimes but but hilarious at other times so she says fine and she goes and heals him and she, Gareth bears her his teeth she says hey I just healed you and rightfully Mock says well you're the one that gave it to him thank you Mock thank you and this there's just a little twinge of kind of fear that shows up in, in Lady Envy thank goodness I love Gareth and suddenly Baljag uh jumps up sees something way north this this massive thing coming out of the ice and it almost the way i think it's like this city on top of a barge a, a massive barge but it's a city and the segula mock instantly recognizes it as these mecros it's almost like these pirates i i think and they show up remember earlier on we we heard of people showing up from the sea and and taking on you know cities but they have also sometimes shown up at the segula island and the segula will just pound them and then they'll leave and then they'll sometimes come back but he recognizes it and it is on its way very slowly headed north so they can hitch ride on it they run over, jumping over these waters and, the, you know, jumping from ice float to ice float, desperate to get there. And 
they get there and it's basically just abandoned or, or something. There's just, it, there's no one there. When they get there, they see that there's some supplies and things in one of these houses. Mox kind of suggests that there's probably more things for them to, to, uh, to use, but it's on its way north to Coral Bay or, th uh, through Coral Bay to this Kafal or whatever the city is. We're at, uh, we're at the last um, page here. Now, both animals suddenly face this figure when they catch up to, when Lady Envy and them catch up to these two, and it is Tool. No, it's another Talani mass. Sorry. A little squatter than Tool. Three black iron broadswords impaled, two in his back, one in his side. And she says, I, yeah, it's a, a female Talani Mass. I have heard the summons. I am Lannis Tog. I am the last of the Curlum, all but destroyed. Remember, there is these other Talani Mass that um, have kind of done their own thing and whatnot, all but destroyed. Only few remain and cannot extricate themselves from the conflict. And she asks, where is this horrifying conflict occurring? The continent of a sail. Of course, it's another continent. Eight months of battle. We have lost this war. Lady Envy was silent for a long moment. Then she said, it seems you found a, a it seems you finally found a jagged tyrant who is more than your match, Lannis Tog. The Talani mask cocked her head. Not jagged. Human. Ooh. <laughs> uh, I am excited. That's the last thing I've read from this book. Now I'm totally caught up and uh, I can keep going on and I'll give you some chapter reactions when I get there. Really cool though.